had to a great extent completed its job of strategic bombing of the occupied countries in Germany. The oil supply, vital to the war machine, the transportation systems, both railroad and road, manufacturing capability, and the communications had been bombed to a near standstill. The great 1300 bomber armadas were no longer needed Remaining targets were smaller, and they required only group or at most a division of bombers. The Allied armies were victorious on all fronts, but as yet Germany itself had not felt the boot of an Allied infantryman. The Rhine River was a final obstacle. On March 24th, the east bank of the Rhine was assaulted by 14,000 American and Canadian airborne troops, landed by 1,300 planes and gliders. Massive air invasion required quick resupply of ammo, food, and medical supplies. The second air division of the 8th Air Force was selected as a unit to carry out this mission. 240 liberators of the second air division delivered the needed supplies right on the target. To ensure the highest possible percentage of accuracy, the supplies were dropped from low level. The 44th Bomb Group participated with distinction as this film by Captain Ursel P. Harvell, photo intelligence officer of the 44th, vividly shows. As on any other mission, the skies of England seem to swarm with the giant bombers of the Mighty Eighth. Each group will assemble in a pre-designated area prior to proceeding eastward to Fortress Europe. The planes assigned to the supply mission assemble over East Anglia and climb to a medium altitude. The rest of the Eighth will attack airfields, bridges, and railways as a diversionary ploy. En route to the target area, we get a close-up look at some of the devastation inflicted upon the once-occupied areas of Europe. 
five years of RAF, three years of U.S. Air Force bombing, have extracted a heavy toll. Hotly contested real estate comprise the target area. The low level drop ensures 96% of the supplies reaching our troops, but proves costly. 22 planes are shot down over the target and the route out of the area. German defense is intense. Besides the 244th Group Liberators shut down, almost every plane has extensive damage from small arms. are shot down in rapid succession. The second plane, which goes down in a near vertical dive, has two survivors, the right waist gunner and the tail gunner. They were rescued from German prison hospitals seven weeks later. Planes shot down over the target are not the only casualties. These representative scenes show the type of damaged aircraft resulting from the intense ground fire. Nose gear collapse puts one in an awkward position and grinds off a lot of metal. You will note some of the planes have an old tail markings of the 44th bomb group. The tail markings were changed in the summer of 1944. Number four engine feathered, no great problem. But a surprise flat tire could give some trouble. It gets pretty hot, but no fire. This one has no brakes. These planes are landing with prior knowledge of their problem, and thus are able to plan a landing for minimum damage. A mix up here, two at once. Both with loss of hydraulic systems. No flaps, no brakes. Air collapse. While doing a nice job holding it straight, the left gear also collapses ever so slowly. 180 degree change of direction and all four engines ruined. This is the only plane to sustain casualties on the emergency landing.
The bomb groups participating in the supply mission were given a well done by Jimmy Doolittle, the commanding general of the 8th Air Force. The mission goes into the record books as the only combat mission flown by the 44th Bomb Group with a purpose other than death and destruction to enemy personnel and materials. Well done indeed. <laughs>